What's going on everybody? Crazy Caden here coming at you on a Sunday. I just got out of the shower. We uh we need to talk. We need to have a little sit down and uh have a coming to Jesus meeting. It's about to get serious. I mean get myself together, do something with my hair and my beard and look somewhat presentable. You might want to sit down with this. to have this coming to jesus meeting episode number one this is our first coming to jesus meeting on the channel so before we get into it, i want to thank everybody for taking the time to sit down and watch uh, and hear my opinion and hear what i got to say on the on the subject that we're going to be talking about today uh which is human trafficking i know it's as i said it's gonna it's gonna be serious this is something that is big and we're going to go into details. Um, I'm going to leave links in the description below of where I've got all my information that I'm going to be discussing with y'all. So y'all can go back and um, do your own research, do your own homework, and further uh, spread the word, spread the awareness, like what I'm trying to do with this. So uh, first of all, before we really get into the uh, human trafficking uh, issue, uh, I want to talk about something that is also involved with it and that's social media social media apps are notorious for hackers and these hackers can track through social media apps your IP address for your mobile device or it's your laptop your tablet your cell phone these hackers from around the world can track your IP address can track your device at any given time they can pinpoint your location they can see all your photos your contacts these are this is scary this this is scary that they have this ability they've, they've been able to do this and I'm gonna talk about later on in the video I'm gonna talk about uh, basically what turned me on to even doing this video to begin with because I came across a guy uh, at work uh, around here and he told me a story a true story um, so somewhat of a bit of a personal experience not me personally but just somebody that I ran across that had a personal experience with this all right so let's talk a little bit about snapchat I think just about anybody that has a smartphone or tablet has used or has heard of snapchat at some point in time um, what it is it's a multimedia messaging app um, that allows you to share pictures short video um, if you send it to your followers individually they view the picture of the video and then poof it's gone if you share it to what's called my story with an app this up there for 24 hours unless you manually pull it down uh, but within those 24 hours your followers can view it unlimited amount of times within those 24 hours so within those two different time frames whether if it's posted on your story or if you send it to your followers individually within those two different time frames they have the opportunity to screenshot and save your picture or video now this app is available worldwide multiple different languages it was developed back in September of 2011 by three former college students from Stanford University it's uh, estimated as February 2018 it has 187 million daily active users that's um, a fun little app to play with you, you, know, you take a picture or a little video uh, you can add filters and uh, different effects and stickers and make it all bedazzled and whatnot it, it's 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 entertaining it, 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 it can be a very fun entertaining app if it's done correctly so the next app that I want to uh, bring to your attention is I believe it's called musically it's uh, musical.ly so I don't use this app um, I don't know much about it I've seen videos I've seen it on Facebook people using it um, 
from what I can see, it's a app to where you can, um, somewhat similar to Snapchat, do short videos of lip syncing or even like I've seen people do like small uh, dance clips uh, with music in the background. So here's just a little detail off of uh, the uh, Musical.ly app that I found on Wikipedia. So Musical.ly is a Chinese video social network app for video creation and live broadcasting. The first prototype was released in April 2014 with the official release in August of 2014. The app allows users to create 15 second to one minute videos and choose soundtracks to accompany them. Use different speed options and add preset filters and effects. The app also allows users to browse popular musers, as they call it, content, trending songs, and sounds and hashtags. And again, this app is available worldwide on the App Store. It's available in multiple different of languages. So the next app that I want to talk about, and forgive me, I, I don't use this one as well. I don't know much about it, and I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Uh, Sahara. So Sahara is a social networking service for providing anonymous feedback. Um, this app was developed in Saudi Arabia, comes from the Middle East area. Um, it says Sahara in Arabic means frankness or honesty. Uh, it was created at the end of 2016 and reached a sudden worldwide success by 2017. So this app is available worldwide on your Play Store, um, on your, not your Play Store, but your, your App Store and uh, available in multiple different languages, of course, worldwide. Um, it is, like I said, their headquarters is in Saudi Arabia. This is an app, uh, from what I'm understanding, that the app allows you to um, give feedback. Somebody asks, somebody posts on their Sahara app, um, asks a question, whatever, and people respond and give feedback on whatever they're requesting. Um, Sahara and Snapchat had a thing to where you could link the two together. You can link your hot your Sahara app account to your Snapchat account. This is where it's starting to turn into what we're discussing. So these apps have access to your photos, contacts, messages, emails, and it, it, it notifies you before you even accept into the terms and conditions that this app gains access to your information, your IP address to your tablet, to your laptop, to your computer, to your cell phone, okay? It's crazy how this is even allowed, but it's in their terms and conditions. I'm guilty for it because I use Snapchat. We agree to it, we use it. And these apps are totally for entertainment and, and can be fun and entertaining. But they also be very dangerous so we're talking about human trafficking and I'm gonna give you um, a small bit of information just from Louisiana where I live and the state that I live in Louisiana so uh, it says here uh, reports of human trafficking cases in Louisiana continued a sharp increase in 2017 with a 52% more cases reported in 2017 compared with the year before according to Department of Children and Family Services report. In all there were 681 reports of human trafficking in Louisiana just last year. In 2017 681 reports of human trafficking just in Louisiana. The average age a teen enters the sex trade in the U.S. is 12 to 14 years old. It says here many victims are runaway girls who are sexually abused as children each year it's estimating 14,500 to 17,500 people are used for human trafficking or if it's sex, sex trade 
or slavery. It also says here that human trafficking is the third largest international crime industry behind illegal drugs and arms trafficking. It is reported generates a profit of $32 billion every year. Of that number, $15.5 billion is made in industrialized countries. It also says here that the International Labor Organization estimates that women and girls represent the largest share of forced labor victims with 11.4 million trafficked victims, that's a 55%, compared to 9.5 million of men, that's a 45%. So of the, tra of the human trafficking, 55% of it is women and little girls, 45% is men. So we talked about the social media apps, um, how they're used and what they're uh, used for, where they come from, a little bit of details on, on what they are. Uh, we also talked about some statistics on uh, human trafficking, um, multiple billions of dollars that these operations profit from, from taking women, little girls, some men, little boys, go for sex trade, slavery. I mean, it blows my mind. So what brought this about um, was that I was working one day and was talking with a guy that was working for the town that we were in and he got a phone call. And uh, it was an FBI agent from Louisiana. His daughter's phone had been confiscated. Now this was, you know, weeks and weeks before uh, this phone call. His daughter's phone, well, she's in her teen year, she's a teenager, uh, had got confiscated by the FBI. They picked up on her IP address as um, some potential hacking or uh, activity. Her, her cell phone had been hacked, is what it was. And the uh, FBI picked up on it because the, you know, they, the FBI is watching us. You know, the government is watching us, y'all. And they picked up on her IP address that her phone had been hacked and they, they took it. They took it for, inve for they took it in for an investigation. So what they found was that there was a human trafficking operation in her town. They came from I forgot what country he uh, told me it was, but it was the Middle East countries, one of the Middle Eastern country countries. There was an operation. Somebody was sent here, and their job was to follow this girl take pictures video get all the information they could they knew her school schedule they knew what time she got on off the bus they knew where she lived they had been tracking her for days and it was even planned that in three days they were gonna kidnap this girl and bring her back for sex trade this is something that we need to spread awareness on this man had a teen, has a teenage daughter that was being tracked by her cell phone through these apps. Through Snapchat is how they got her IP address and had been following her, taking pictures of her and sending back, emailing back. And they were bidding on her left and right, bidding on this girl for sex trade. They were going to kidnap this girl. They had been following her. They had three potential buyers. And in three days, they were going to kidnap her and bring her back to the Middle East country. I forget which one it was. The point I want to get across to y'all is that, you know, kids having cell phones nowadays is a very common thing. It's a good thing. It can be a good thing. But parents, we need to monitor our kids' phones. We need to know what they're doing. We need to have guidelines, limitations. I know that... Um, a lot of cell phone providers are uh, have options that you can make it to where it's a kid friendly only. I believe there's apps that are kid friendly only. I've seen Facebook just release a uh, kids version of Facebook for under age, under 18. So I guess it, it can be a good thing if you do it right. Okay, and and I'm 33 years old. You know, when I was coming up as a teenager, I didn't get my first cell phone until I was 16. And the only reason I was allowed to get a cell phone was because I had an old truck. 
left me on the side of the road a few times and my parents said okay yeah you can get a cell phone and times have definitely changed a lot especially in technology so we need to be aware of what's going on and the possibilities and just the reality of 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 all of this I mean, it's just insane these numbers that I researched that I found it blew my mind I knew it was an issue I didn't know it was that big of an issue like it I almost dropped my phone when I saw these numbers like I was like oh my god 681 cases reports just in Louisiana alone multiple billions of dollars in profit with these human trafficking operations just blows my mind so that's going to be all I have for y'all today be aware of what your kids are doing make yourself available to research before you allow your kids to use these applications for your for their phones and yourself before you download it before you get into it google it look on wikipedia look get information on where these apps come from what they're used for before you download because once you download it hackers have access through those apps to access all your information I appreciate everybody watching thank you for taking the time to uh, be a part of this coming to Jesus meeting episode number one I would greatly appreciate everybody would spread this and share this with everybody spread on your social media send it to your friends send it to your family I greatly much appreciate it and let's make America not only great again but let's make America safe again protect yourself protect your kids thank you for watching